What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Career Mode today. This is the second episode of our new side here at Inter Milan. We've obviously joined them from Brighton and yes, well, last episode, I was about to say yesterday's, but last episode, we uh, we took on Juventus for the Supercoppa Nationale and we beat them by four goals to one. If you missed that episode, I recommend you guys go check it out. Now, I've got a few comments that I have to address. Firstly, it came in and Dingo Dog says to sign either... Benjamin Pavard for right back and also check out Ezekiel Barcho, which I'm going to do today. So don't worry, mate. That's going to come into it. Now, this is one that I saw quite a few times regarding a certain centre-back at the club. And that man is, where is he? There he is, Alessandro Bastoni. He's transfer listed by me. I listed him because he was 22 and only 75 rated. But a large number of you said don't sell him because he has a potential... Of 87. So, we're going to remove him from the transfer list, boys and girls. There it is. It's done. He stays at the club, as per your guys' suggestion. So, we'll see if he's going to be able to play a part this season. I'm going to use him and try and train him up to the point where I'm, I'm comfortable to have him come into the team. And uh, we'll see if he can get to a good overall in order to play some games. So, if you guys didn't put that comment, I would never have known. So, there we go. So, that's the beauty of having you guys as well. And uh, in terms of any other comments, there was one more that I wanted to talk about. Actually, two more. And uh, one of them comes from Dimitris, who says to sign Tonali. He must be 84 rated by now, which he's also transfer listed. Uh, sorry, he's also in my, uh, in my transfers hub squad, as in scout thing that I'm trying to look at. So I might make a move for him because, as you guys know, we had to play with Nangolan as a CDM in the game against Juve. And the problem with that is that he's actually decreasing quite a bit. So I'm not sure about that, if we're going to be able to keep hold of him long term. And also, the final one came from... There it is. I apologise in advance if I get your name wrong. Arjun, Arjun um, who says, for a fullback position, you should think about buying Mbabu from BSC Young Boys. He's a quick right back with a tendency of clearing the ball as soon as possible. He's also amazing while the team is on the counter, attacking. And he's only in his early 20s after simming two seasons. His potential goes up a lot. Definitely a player worth having in the starting eleven. So that's what we're going to do today. Try and sign a couple more players. And I've got some really good news too. Let's take a look quickly at that. Look what has happened to the transfer budget. Last episode I left you off. We only had 28 million left with 100k. But if we go to transactions, look at what happened here. Player shirt sales, 38 million. Then we got some transfers. Season tickets, 53 million. Player transfer, 10 million. Honestly... They upped our budget by a lot. So now we have 58 million to spend with 200k in the wages, which is ridiculous. So hopefully that's going to give us enough money to make the three signings happen today, which I think are going to be Barso, Barcho, however you say it, let me know in the comments, and Babu and also Tonlo Tonoli. They're the three that I want to sign today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and try and sign all three of them. So I'm not really sure how much I should be offering for each of these players, but we're going to start with Kevin and Babu because we need ourselves a right back. Problem is I can't scout him because uh, my scouts currently are not in and around Switzerland. So let's approach to bite and just see what happens in the first little negotiation. The worst case scenario is we waste this and have to redo it again. But I'm going to check to see around about what he could actually be in terms of rating. And that should give me an indication. Okay, so in terms of rating, apparently he's about 81, 82 at this stage. So I think 16 and a half is a respectable amount of money immediately in. Let's see what they say to that. They want 24.1. I was expecting somewhere in the region of 20, to be honest. So I'm going to I'm going to decrease this even down lower. Go 18.5 for the moment and see if they accept that offer. And uh, 21 million is what they're sticking to. So I'm going to go 19. I always try and get the cheapest I possibly can, as you guys know, just because I like getting these bargains in. So 19 million, respectable amount. If they accept that, they definitely want the 21. So my last offer is 20. It's only a million less. If they decline it, so be it. And they didn't. So 20 million quid for Mbabu is currently what we have on the table. And I mean, at this point, we need a right back. So I've really got no option. So first and foremost, it has to be right back. I think in order of what we definitely need, it goes Mbabu, then Tonali, then Barso. Because right now we're okay for wingers, but it would be nice also to get him in as well. Um, and we need a right back. Then we somewhat need a CDM. And then finally the, the winger. So for the most part, that's the order I'm going to try and go in. As Mbabu is down for a four-year contract. As a disregard release clause, he wants a release clause. I'm going to deny that. I don't want to let him have a release clause at the club. So what are we thinking for wages? 
Should we say 60k a week? I think that's a respectable amount. 60k a week is fine to me, I, I, I assume. And he's fair. So yeah, first signing of the episode made. Kevin and Babu is in. And he becomes our new right back, which we were actually playing Thomas Partey in there previously. The issue now, though, is Thomas Partey can go back into that CDM role. So that fits it well. Problem is I don't have a backup CDM, you know. So that's where Tonali will come in. And there is Kev and Babu. He's 81 rated, really good physical stats. Could do with a little bit better in terms of skills and attributes, but for a right back, he'll fit the job. Six foot, high, medium attacking work rates. Three star, three star. And I think that's a great signing for a side like ours, who's just coming along nicely. Like I said, Beretta last episode was a really good signing. If you missed that, we picked him up as an Aaron Ramsey replacement. 24 years of age, he had a uh, release clause for 20 something million from Cagliari. We picked him up and he was a boss in that first game. That's all I'm going to say about it. So, up next is potentially Tonali. Now, Tonali's contract is expiring in 11 months, as is Barso's. So, at this point, I'm not sure how good Tonali actually is, because he starts at 60-something, 60 68, 69, I think. And so, his potential is somewhere in the 88 to, uh, like, 90 stage. So, with three seasons in, <clears throat> this is the fourth season. I'm going to say 12 mil, straight up, 12 mil. He's only got 11 months left. Fair offer. That worries me slightly because now I'm thinking how, what overall actually is he? Do you know what I'm saying? The fact they've instantly accepted 12 million quid is a little bit worrying. We're going to negotiate the contract now though. I mean, I'm hoping at least for 76 rated. That's at least what I'll accept. Considering we're four seasons in, if he hasn't grown by eight ratings in those seasons... That'll be a little bit ridiculous. So I'm going to go important. See what he says to that. He's happy with that. Five-year deal. Pfft, I'm more than happy to have you on that, Tonali, mate. Let's see what you think. You're not interested in release clause. Neither am I. Let's go forward. Money-wise, now I'm thinking 30k here. Immediately going to offer the 30k. He should accept that. That's a good deal. Yeah, I was going to say, he'll be happy with that. 30 grand a week, not too terrible. Let's check him out. All right, so before we look at this, as I said, 76 is what I want to see, at least. What have we got, though? 75. Hmm. I mean, it's not the end of the world because we can train him. That's not a problem. You know, we, we slap him in the training, get him up a little bit. But that's a little bit concerning, considering we're four seasons in. Something like that. This is our fourth season, yeah. So, for him to only be 75 rated... It's not great. So, I mean, yeah, like I said, worst case scenario, we'll train him up. Can he play centre-back as well? 5'11". Needs be, I guess we could. But, there you go then. Tenali in. Last signing we need to make now is that of Ezekiel Barso. Is it Barso or Barcho? Let me know in the comments. Looking at it now, I actually think Robinson might have been the better option. In fact, we could even bring him in as a centre-back if I've got enough money to do it after Barsho. That would be something. Right, 11 months left on Ezekiel's contract. Let's see if we can get him here on the cheap. I'm going to go in initially with... See, again, a little bit unsure as to rating. I'm going to say he's probably 80 rated at this stage. So, I'm going to say 14 million outright. In fact, let's not mess it up. Let's go 14.5 and uh, see what they say to that. Okay, yeah, I, I, uh, well, I had a feeling that things probably wouldn't go so swimmingly there. So we're going to have to wait to try and get Barcho in. Now, Peter Robinson, on the other hand, we'll see if we can swap a player for him. We're back doing a little bit more of a deal with our uh, former club. Question is, are they going to let Peter Robinson go? They're looking for a fullback, a striker, or a midfielder, which is a little bit worried because, like, I have a stacked team over it, right? And why would you be needing fullbacks? Or anything like that. So, we're not going to go with Sanchez. What midfielders have we got? Um, now, I could I could offer them Raja Golan. They want nine Golan plus five million. I think that's a good deal. In all honesty, I think that is a good deal. I'm going to bump it down to three million. Because that saves us enough money to probably bring in Barcho as, as well. I think that's a banging deal. In all honesty, we're basically paying 15, 16 million quid for a player that's worth 14.5. And I think this guy's got potential to be special. 
He's six foot seven, by the way. That's the only reason I want him. So we're going to go back to Brighton for a former player of ours in Peter Robinson. And then after we've played our game, I'm going to go back in for Ezekiel Basho too. So recommended wage. Oh, he's on 20 grand a week already. I'm going to say important here too. Now, I know what you guys are probably thinking. Um, no, don't worry about it. Tonali is still part of my plans. But I'm going to use this guy potentially as a centre-back in a backup side alongside Bastoni. So then that way we've got both of them in and they can both do the job for us. So I'm going to offer 30k out, right? Same wage as what Tonali's on. And he's happy with that one. So there we go. Robinson in. Like I said, he's just a beast. Like overall, 83 strength. Really, really good. He's got good marking, good tackling, good short passing. And uh, can play CDM centre back. Also six foot seven with medium high work rates. This guy is a machine. The only reason I didn't really use him at um, at Brighton was because I just had better players. Whereas this time around, I definitely want to see what he's about. So side's coming on really nicely. Of course, Mbabu immediately improves the side. And when Basho gets here, potentially will he'll take the place of Christian Portu on the bench or maybe Shalov. I'm not sure if he'll get in ahead of Rafinha or Gordon though. Transfer offer for Shalov, who I wasn't going to let go, but because we're thinking about bringing in Ezekiel. It might be a good idea to potentially see what this offer can go to from Mark Hughes. I'm going to say immediately I want 19.5. If he declines it, he declines it. But you never know. They're willing to pay the 19.5. Well then. We'll see if he does go to Southampton. I've got a feeling that's going to fall through. Guys, Bandini just won't leave. I've accepted so many offers... And he just won't negotiate terms with teams. Argentinos Juniors now is another side that he's uh, declined to go to. What I will say is, uh, in terms of that one, if he's not gone at the end of this window, I will be releasing him from the contract. I don't have any plans for a 27-year-old, 63-rated right-back at this current stage. Um, we're about to make us our Serie A debut up against Napoli. A really tough game, this. But I want to show you this, too, as Rabio has left Br uh, Brighton to go to FC Bayern. Jonathan Tarr has joined Manchester City as well. When you consider just how much we were splashing out for players at Brighton, 125 million, and yet now we're splashing 12 million on Sandro Tonali. It's a bit different, isn't it? But they've purchased him for around 70 million quid. So that's a good sign for them. He's going to be a bit of a beast over at the Allianz. Surprising that Brighton let him go for so little. You know what I'm saying? Now the question is, who are Brighton going to bring in in his place? On that topic, I actually want to check very quickly before we go into game, just to see who's got the highest, you know, deal of the window so far. It is Jonathan Tarr, followed by Rabio. So, La Celso's in there, Taliso, Batshuayi, Milik, William Jose. So Milik's gone to Leverkusen. Is there anybody I've got to be concerned with in terms of Serie A football, though? Not at the minute. Frank Brown is the highest transfer to the Serie A this season. In net. So at the minute... We don't really have to be concerned about any sort of team yet. Lindelof to Milan, actually. That could be quite a big one. Napoli signing Pavlenka. Again, Milan, Tech Kenetete. Napoli for signing Guerrero. Yeah, not too bad. So let's jump ourselves into this game against Napoli. I think we're going to go with this starting 11 right here. So we've got Frank Brown, Harry Maguire, De Vrij, and Babu and Rulison. Thomas Partey, Barella, Coziello, Rafinha, Gordson, and of course... Arturo Martinez up front. On the bench, Shelov, Portu, Robinson, Demir Bay, Berecha, Bastoni, Bastoni and Tonali too. So very, very good team. And hopefully we'll be able to give Napoli quite the game here. Not sure if it's going to be easier or harder than the game we faced off against Juve in the last episode. But we'll find out in due course. We're at the Stadion Olympic here. And it's about time we got our Serie A campaign underway. And for those of you who follow the Road to Glory career mode, yesterday was not a good day for me. I played some horrific FIFA. Serious, horrific FIFA. So today's going to be different. We've got our side here. We've got a strong team. And we're ready for this one against Napoli. I see that it is going to be quite a tough game. Nathaniel Klein is at right back for Napoli. As we see, is that Maradona? Yeah, it probably is with that famous hand of his. Sick. Anyway, right. Insigne is still there. I can see him. Patrick Cattro in there as well. Who's their number nine? Who is their number nine? Because I don't recognise their number nine, in which case it might be a youth academy player, which could either be great for us or bad for us. In fact, though, if it was a youth academy player, I think he would have the default boots. So I'm pretty sure, actually, it won't be a, a default player. It's Verdi. He's not. He's, uh, he is actually an actual player. Alan in the, cam role, in the CDM role as captain. Dahoud in there as well. 
Zuma, Rudiger at the back, Guerrero. It's a strong back four too. Yeah, this is going to be this is going to be a quite a tough game. This I'm looking quite forward to it actually. We battered Juve in the last one, but I think that was just down to the fact they were a bit tired from the season before. So now is where the real season begins. The Serie A campaign is about to get underway. You've seen our side, and it's about time we got this game well and truly on. Let's do it, boys. Come on. Godson, who was brilliant against Juve all game long. And here he goes again, Noah Godson. He tore apart the full back, and there is the first shot on the first goal of the game. Three minutes gone. Inter Milan won. Napoli nil, and it's Barella with a finish as well. All stemming from Noah Godson who tore apart Juve's right back in the last episode. And he's doing it again here after three minutes against Napoli. Nathaniel Klein's going to have such a tough task today, but what a cross. And look at this for a composed volley from Barella. This kid's going to be big for us at Inter Milan. Release, call, release clause paid to Cagliari for him. And that's two tremendous finishes in as many games for Barella. And he's given us the lead already after three minutes, boys and girls. Already in this game, Nicolo Barella has scored our opening Serie A goal. What a dream start. But I tell you what, I am very concerned that that was, that was a little bit too quick. I hate scoring so, so early because then you get put into a false sense of security. Like, should I defend now? Should I come back and attack? What should I do at this point? Because you're never, you're never not sure. You know, what, what do you do? As they've given the ball away here. Martinez looking for Godson again. And Klein steps in. Coziello and Babu towards Rafinha, who's still on side. Now Rafinha driving towards the edge of the penalty area. Dinks it back in. Back stick, Coziello. What is the header from Coziello? That should have been 2-0 Inter. We should have been home and dry here. The counter-attack's working brilliantly, by the way, at this point. How does he go his header so wrong to the point where he's put it out nearly for a goal kick? I have no idea. I'm going to try and aim this near post. I see Lotoro Martinez. See if he can get his header on it. There's delivery. Up goes a few players and it's come off Feigl. Out for another corner. A near post one really didn't work there, did it? Let's try again. Gordon again. Martinez up. And this time it's into the side netting and it should be half time. At the break though, I'm feeling pretty good about things. Napoli have had a lot more of the ball. We'll check that out in the match backs in a second. But in terms of the performance itself, we've been clinical in the way we've had the ball and created more chances than they have had. I believe if you take a look at this, that they're going to have a lot more possession, but we have the more chances. So let's take a quick look at that. And it is correct. 55% of the ball, yet they've had zero shots to our three. However, we've only put one of them on target, and that was Barella's opener. Martinez. Demir Bay. Look at the run being made from Gordson, and he's found him, Noah Gordson, now. Here is still Noah. Gordson cuts back towards Rillison. Rillison keeps hold of the ball too. Really good work from him. Now Thomas Partey towards Rafinha. Rafinha overlapping his Barella. He sends him through. Barella dinks it back in. Up goes it. Oh, Martinez, that was the moment. Partey again to Rafinha. That, that was the moment for Lotoro Martinez to get his first goal. Rafinha's delivery. Martinez on Mars. Off the woodwork. Barella up there. It's cleared off the line by Pamelenka. And Rudiger just about sorts himself out to get it out. I can't believe we're not winning 2-0. Martinez is the woodwork, and then Barella's follow-up header is somehow clawed off the line by Pavalenka. Oh my goodness. Martinez, we just want your first goal for me. All I want is your first goal under my, my, my managerial reign here. That's all I'm asking for. Nearly had it there, mate. Come on. Klein looking for a cross. It's, fl it's flicked down. Weigel. That's so undeserved here. Ten minutes from time. Napoli have scored. They've equalised. It's Ferdi with it as well. That's so undeserved. We don't... Oh, I can't believe that. We don't deserve to be back in the game at 1-1. We should be home and dry in this. Think about the chances we've had. Coziello's header from literally yards out. And he put it back out for a corner. And then we have, you know, the shot, which is off the post from Martinez. Then it's cleared off the line. From Barella, and then Verdi goes and does that. I think that's their first shot too. That's so, so undeserved on our part. We deserve better than that. Rafinha now trying to get us back on the front foot immediately after we've conceded. Rafinha, poor cross. If we do sign Barcho, the man that's going to be getting replaced here is definitely Rafinha. Take a look at him against Noah Gordson and tell me how on earth you actually would even consider bringing out Gordson of the team when Rafinha's playing like he is. It just doesn't happen. Martinez, Gordson again. Noah Gordson cutting back on the right foot. Why is he trying to... What? What? Why are the crosses going to the edge of the area all of a sudden? I'm so confused. Not the touch I wanted. And Babu up against Insigne. And Babu does well enough to put it out into touch. And that should be it. 
you know what? Before kickoff, I think I'd have taken a point away to Napoli. But the way the game panned out, I can't help but feel that we've been quite unlucky there. So 1-1 one, one draw here against Napoli. They'll feel a lot better about things than we will because we dominated that game. And uh, again, Barello, what a performance from him. I'm just disappointed that Martinez didn't finish off his chance. But look at those match facts again, guys. Really, really bad to see. Nicolo, Nicolo Barella picking up man of the match, though, to be expected. He's been brilliant since we signed him. I'm just really am disappointed that we haven't come away with a win there. Shalov has gone. He's agreed terms with Southampton. So that transfer has actually gone through, which I was not expecting to see. Miranda towards Ajax. Let's see if that one will go through. I'm going to accept that too. For now, we are waiting for a couple more days so we can actually go back in for Ezekiel. So we're going to see if that has actually reset or not. I believe it will not have by now. No, still not reset. So still awaiting that one. And I did we offer 15 million last time? So I'm going to, I think I go, I think I go straight in with 20 million this time. We've got enough to be able to pay for that. So the sale of Shalov certainly helped that cause. Milan up next too. This is going to be a little bit tough, I would say. Ray Minaj, never going to get in the team. So I'm going to accept that too. Antonio Bereccia wanted, but I'm going to reject that because he is our backup left back at this current time. And as you can get another offer this time, it's from Genoa, one of our current rivals in terms of playing in the same league. Do you know what, guys? I think I'd take a top four this season. I think that's got to be the aim outright. Just top four, get ourselves in there again, and then we can focus on trying to improve this side to the point of winning the Serie A. Problem is, though, I'm not sure if I'll keep my job after that because the board, as you guys know... Or wanting a, uh, a thingy finish, a victory in terms of the Serie A, winning the Europa League and winning the Coppa Nationale too. So we've all got to think about that too. So I'm going to try and sign Barcio here. I'm going to go in with that £20 million offer. Like I said, we've got 39 to work with. So I feel that, in fact, let's go 22 just to be on the safe side. 22 million quid. 28.3. Let's go straight in with 25. How, how good must he be at this current time then if they're wanting this much money for him? Because if they're wanting that, he must be at least 83, I'd say. 25.5. Sell on clause a 10% too. There we go. Right, so Barcio is here. We just need to negotiate the contract for him. He can play left, mid, cam or striker. So like I said, my plan here potentially will be to replace Rafinha in the side and use Noah Gordon on one wing and Ezekiel on the other. So, important first-team player is what he wants. Five-year contract length. Quite happy to give him that. No release clause. I don't want to hand out release clauses. Wages. This is where it gets problematic. 70k, I'm going to go. I don't want to risk him having a Barney with me. So, if I immediately offer 70k, he can't turn that down. Didn't think so. Brilliant. There we go. He's in. That's our third signing of this episode alone. And we still have a bit more money to work with as well. Especially if the deals for Minaj and uh, Miranda go through. We will then still have extras too. So, where is he? There he is. 81 rated. So, 25 million for an 81 rated player is a, quite a big amount. Four star, four star though. Only 22. So, still has a lot of potential. Very fast. 80, uh, 97 acceleration. 81 sprint speed. We can train sprint speed too. Uh, ball control's okay. Dribbling's alright. Finishing needs improving. So, yeah. Not too bad there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually going to leave the episode there as well for today. I actually have to go and get ready because I'm out all day. I'm going to an event for one of my friends. So I need to go get ready for that. It's going to take a, quite a while. I need to go do a lot of stuff. So um, when you're watching this, I want to say a massive thank you. Uh, YouTube did a rewind of subscribers yesterday. So it's kind of cool to see, obviously, that I had so many current subscribers who are still actually active because um, they took a lot of them out in terms of that one. I didn't actually lose that many in the grand scheme of things, but... Still, it's kind of weird to see that. Now, if the sales of Menage and Miranda do go through, we will have about £25 million to spend. I will take another look at the comments from yesterday's episode or the episode whenever it went live, last episode, and then this one to decide on who else we should sign. The one thing I will be doing is bringing in a youth scout as well, so I may as well do that right now. I'm only going to hire one this time, though, and I'm going to get the best possible one. There we go, 2.8 million quid. And we're going to send him to Italy as well because that's where we are playing at this current time. So let's send him to Italy for nine months. So, like I said... When those trade transfer sales go through, we will have about 25 million quid to spend. So it's over to you guys to decide what you want next. Disappointing to draw the game against Napoli today, but we will begin next episode off against Milan. Juve find themselves bottom after the first game, losing 1-0. Interesting. So yeah, that'll be uh, quite, quite fun to see how they're going to bounce back from that. Nevertheless, though, guys, thank you all so much for your support, as always. Massively appreciate it. And I will see you all again with another video later on tonight. And my player career mode comes back from tomorrow, guys. So don't you worry about it today. Until then, though, 
catch you again very soon. Adios.